Hello everyone. So, in our previous module, we learned about principal component analysis using R. Today, we are going to discuss about factor analysis using R. Now, as I mentioned before that very often we have to deal with a huge number of variables and due to several problems in handling huge number of variables we desire for a reduction in the dimension. We learnt about principal component analysis as a dimension reduction technique. Today we are going to talk about another such method mainly factor analysis. In this course, I am going to mainly talk about the applications of factor analysis. For the theoretical part, one can refer back to the course on factor analysis in a previous module. Learning objectives. So, firstly, we are going to give a quick review about factor analysis and several results on factor analysis. Then we are going to look at the estimation of the factor model using principal component method of estimation and the estimation of the corresponding factor scores. Followed by we are going to look at the estimation of the factor model using the maximum likelihood method of estimation and the estimation of the corresponding factor scores. We are going to also look at an example where factor analysis is not worthwhile. Finally, we will summarize our findings from the today's lecture. So, we give a quick review of factor analysis. For a detailed description, one can look back at a previous module named factor analysis where one can find the detailed theoretical background on factor analysis and the results. Suppose x is a vector of m variables with the dispersion matrix sigma. Let us assume a model of the form x equal to mu plus l f plus epsilon, where mu is an m component vector of means f is a p component vector of factors, epsilon is an m component vector of specific factors and l is an m by p matrix of loadings. We have the assumptions expected value of epsilon equal to 0, expected value of f is equal to 0, the dispersion of epsilon is given by psi which is a diagonal matrix, the dispersion of the vector f of factors is an identity matrix of order p and the vectors f and epsilon are uncorrelated. This is known as an orthogonal factor model. With these assumptions, we have that expected value of x equals mu and the dispersion matrix of x that is sigma is of the form LL transpose plus psi. The variance of the ith variable x i is given by the sum of squares of the elements of the matrix L corresponding to the ith row and the quantity psi i. The first quantity is known as the communality and the quantity psi i is known as uniqueness. For a good factor model, we want communality to be large and uniqueness to be small. Also, it is desired that p that is the number of factors is much much smaller than the number of variables m. Otherwise, there is no point in doing the factor analysis. The contribution of the jth factor to the total variability of the data is given by lambda j by summation x j, j running from 1 to m, where j is the largest eigen. So, the contribution of the jth factor to the total variability of the data is given by lambda j 
by summation variance of x j j from 1 to m, where lambda j is the jth largest eigenvalue of the matrix sigma. The cumulative contribution of the j factors to the total variability is given by sum over k from 1 to j lambda k by summation j from 1 to m variance of x j. So, firstly we look at an example. So, we have the data on different athletes and the times taken by those athletes to complete different races like a 100 meter race, 200 meter race etcetera. Note that the times taken to complete the 100 meter race, 200 meter race and the 400 meter race are given in seconds whereas, the times taken to complete the other races that is corresponding to the other columns is given in minutes. So, firstly we start by finding the correlation matrix of the data. Here we find the correlation matrix because the units of measurement of the different variables are different. So, we firstly standardize the variables and find the dispersion matrix of those standardized variables which is equivalent to finding the correlation matrix of the original data. Next, we find the eigenvalues corresponding to the matrix R and we store it in the R object lambda. Here is the eigenvalues and they are in the decreasing order of magnitude. We also extract the eigenvectors corresponding to the different eigenvalues of the matrix R and we find the cumulative proportion of the total variability explained by the different factors. So, here is the cumulative proportion of the variability explained by the factors. Notice that the first two factors explain about 94 percent of the total variability of the data. So, we consider that the number of factors p for our given data is 2. Firstly, we are going to look at the principal component method of estimation. For that, we find the matrix L. So, to give a better understanding, the rows of the matrix L are given the variable names and the columns of the matrix L is given the names factor 1 and factor 2. So, here is the matrix L that is the matrix of loadings. The residual matrix is given by subtracting from the correlation matrix R the matrix L L transpose. The diagonal components of this residual matrix are the estimates of the uniqueness. So, we extract the diagonal components from this residual matrix by the command diag in R and store it in the R object psi. So, here are the estimates of the uniqueness. Next, we want to find the factor scores. For the principal component method of estimation, the estimated factor scores corresponding to the ith individual is given as f i hat which is the factor score corresponding to the ith individual is equal to L transpose L whole inverse L transpose x i minus x bar. So, first we find the values x i minus x bar. Now, for the original data runner, each row corresponds to a particular athlete. So, we subtract from each row the means corresponding to the different variables that is the different column means. Next, we define f to be a matrix of suitable order consisting of only zeros. First, we store the quantity L transpose L inverse L transpose as the matrix A and 
we are going to run a loop and find the estimates of the factor scores for the different individuals. So here we have the loop for finding the estimates of the factor scores. For better understanding, we give the names to the two columns of the matrix F and they are denoted as factor 1 and factor 2. So, here is the matrix F which gives the estimates of the factor scores for the different athletes. In particular for our given data, we have 55 athletes and these give the estimates of the factor scores for the 55 athletes. So, now we are going to look at what these estimates of the factor scores actually mean. Consider any such individual, in particular let us consider the fourth individual. We look at the original data corresponding to the fourth athlete and we look at another row corresponding to the matrix F say the sixth row and we also look at the data corresponding to the sixth individual. Let us suppose that factor 1 is what is called endurance and factor 2 is the strength. We see from the fourth row of the matrix F that endurance that is the factor 1 is more for the fourth individual than the sixth individual. So, the longer distance races are covered in less time for the fourth individual than the sixth individual. Whereas, strength that is the factor 2 is more for the sixth individual than the fourth individual and thereby the shorter distance races are covered in less time for the sixth individual than the fourth individual as we see from the above two boxes. Next we are going to look at the maximum likelihood method of estimation. So, the built in R function for the maximum likelihood method of estimation of a factor model is given by fact annal. So, for the given data we use the R command fact annal and we choose the argument factors as 2 and also the rotation as the very max rotation. From the R output fit underscore ML we see that the test of hypothesis that the factors are significant, the p value corresponding to the test is 0 0.23, implying that the model fit with two factors is appropriate. So, fit underscore ml is my r output. To find the matrix of loadings, we extract from the R object fit underscore ML the argument loadings and we store it in the object L dot ML for example. Here we have the matrix of the loadings from the maximum likelihood method of estimation. To get the uniqueness, we extract uniqueness from the R object fit underscore ML and we get the uniqueness. Next, we want to find the estimates of the factor scores by the maximum likelihood method of estimation. For the maximum likelihood method, the estimated factor scores corresponding to the ith individual is given as follows. To get an estimate of the factor scores corresponding to the different individuals, we extract 
from the our object fit underscore ml underscore scores the argument scores. Note that here we specify the R command as fact tunnel followed by the runners data set, the number of factors as 2 and we also mention scores followed by within double quotation regression and rotation as very max as before. If we do not specify scores equal to regression, then by default the R function fact tunnel does not give the scores. But if we specify the scores, then the R function fact tunnel also computes the scores which can be extracted using the command dollar scores. So, here are the estimates of the factor scores and the interpretation of the factor scores is as before. Next, we look at an example where it is not worthwhile to perform the factor analysis. Suppose we have x to be a vector of 6 variables with the correlation matrix R as given. Firstly, we find the eigenvalues corresponding to the matrix R. So, here are the eigenvalues in the decreasing order of magnitude and also we find the cumulative proportion of the variability explained by the factors. So, here is the cumulative proportion of the total variability. We see from the above table that the first 5 factors are needed to explain about 93 percent of the original data variability. Here we have 6 variables and the first 5 factors are required to explain 93 percent of the total variability. So, if we use factor analysis in this situation, we do not get much reduction in dimension. So, to conclude, we can perform factor analysis in R using several inbuilt functions. If we have data in the raw form, then we can go for the principal component method of estimation or the maximum likelihood method of estimation. However, if we do not have data in the raw form, then we need to go for the principal component method of estimation of the factor model. Again, the conclusion that if the variables are highly correlated amongst themselves, then we can achieve significant reduction in dimension through factor analysis. Also, if the variables are not much correlated amongst themselves, then factor analysis is not worthwhile in the sense that we cannot achieve much significant reduction in dimension by performing factor analysis.